Hey guys, right after the first Godzilla vs. Kong trailer went live, you started to see videos and comments online where people were saying that the Godzilla seen in some, if not all of the trailer, is an imposter. And for evidence, they point to the inclusion of Mechagodzilla. In the Showa era's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Mecha G would make its first appearance undercover as Fake Godzilla, which is the official name. Until its true identity is finally revealed. But does that mean that the legendary Mecha G will try to use the same deception? The Monsterverse is heavily influenced by the Showa era, but there were many different Mecha Godzillas in every era. To find out more about this, I wanted to dig a little deeper than the Godzilla vs. Kong footage that we have so far. I also want to take a look at Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the other MonsterVerse and Toho films, the as yet unreleased toys, and marketing images to see if this guy here truly is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. So here we have it, the big aircraft carrier scene that's been teased in the leaked marketing images and on the toy packaging for a long time now. And I have to admit, I can see why some people are saying that the size of Godzilla in respect to the aircraft carrier seems a bit off. When we look back at Godzilla 2014, where he was a bit smaller mind you, we can see him next to a modern aircraft carrier and when it's compared to the carrier shot in Godzilla vs Kong, the size is not consistent. However, it's been confirmed that in the films, some size references were off to give dramatic effect. For one, the bridge scene, if you count for the height of the bridge at the road, along with the depth of the water underneath the bridge, there's no way Godzilla would stand as high as he did. He would be well under that bridge. But it looked awesome, which is why they chose to scale the big G as so for the scene. That said, is it realistic that Kong and Godzilla could stand on a carrier and that it would stay afloat? To me, not even in the monsterverse that Mecha G would exist in. Especially if that is the imposter, Mecha Godzilla, who should be heavier than the big G, but like I said, it makes for a great shot. Now there are some who will say that the size is also off because Kong should not be near the same size as Godzilla. And I really do think that some of this comes from the Kong size bias that's been out there since the movie was announced. Every forum and comment section, even when the early images were leaked proving that the two were almost equal size, said that there was no way that Kong could get that big. This nonsense continues now even with the release of the trailers. They simply ignore the cave painting that shows a huge Kong ancestor fighting Godzilla or one of its kind. And on top of that, look at the original King Kong vs Godzilla. Even there, they are nearly the same size. Yet if size in these films isn't truly consistent, then we can't really use the size differences to prove fake Godzilla's existence. There have been mentions of the color of Godzilla's skin and even his atomic breath changing slightly throughout the trailer, possibly giving away a fake G and a real G. But to me these are subtle and minute differences that are more likely due to lighting, especially when comparing day and night scenes along with the small inconsistencies in CGI that appear in many of these films. Now when Godzilla climbs up onto the carrier, his claws do spark on the surface. But that could happen with his natural claws. And it's not enough for me to say that the hands have metal in them. There is also what many say is blood that comes out of Godzilla's mouth from Kong's punch. I can see a hint of that, but it could be dirt, smoke, or debris, it's really hard to tell here. If this really is Mecha G on that carrier, it's amazingly lifelike. The gills look real and you can even see spit in his mouth. But to be fair, if fake Godzilla used Ghidorah's regeneration abilities combined with a skin sample of Godzilla to make a fake outer skin, then it's possible details like this could be duplicated. Yet I still lean towards this being the real Godzilla. I'm not doubting the tech to do so. This universe is getting more and more unreal with each film, especially King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs Kong. I just think that this would overload a full plate story-wise. Another reasoning that I've heard in support of fake Godzilla is that with the Godzilla we see in some or all of the trailer, or more so his attitude and aggression, is not like the Godzilla we know from the legendary Monsterverse, where some fans see him as a protector of mankind. But I believe this is a misconception. 
Godzilla is here to provide balance to the planet or Earth's ecosystem as a whole. When humans work in balance with the environment, Godzilla is protective of them. But when they mistreat their surroundings, I don't think he'd think twice about wiping them out. The Titans have done it before, so it wouldn't be a first. The second Showa Godzilla protected mankind, and the Heisei one was indifferent, fighting monsters with no real hate or reverence for man. My ideal version of the legendary G would be somewhere in between the two. So why, as Mark says, Godzilla's out there and he's hurting people and we don't know why. Well, some would say that this is Mecha G in action, but it would appear that the attack sites on the map are Apex facilities. Sure, surrounding areas are receiving collateral damage, but it does seem that the Wrath is focused on the facilities. If Apex does gain control of Mecha Godzilla, it could be possible that the Big G is taking these bases out, searching for his doppelganger, or maybe he's just taking out the people behind it all. The Monarch organization has been shown to be the good guys so far for the franchise, so one could assume that Apex will be the bad guys, or at least people with a different motive than Monarchs. But the strange thing is, according to the newspaper articles at the end of King of the Monsters, it's reported that Monarch is actually the ones creating organic titans and a mechanized giant one. To me, this sounds like something that an evil group would do and not the Monarch that we know of so far. Although maybe they're creating their own titans, robot and organic, as a contingency plan if Godzilla goes wild or if other dangerous titans go rogue and Godzilla doesn't interfere to stop them. We've heard of agents within Monarch who could be working undercover, possibly for Apex. If this is the case, this could be where they would gain control of Mecha Godzilla and possibly even other Titans. Yet we do know from King of the Monsters that Jonah has that Ghidorah head, which the director has said will be involved in the creation of Mecha Godzilla. I know myself and others have speculated that its brain could be used inside of Mecha G. I also thought early on that they could use Ghidorah's lightning based powers as energy to power up the enormous mech titan. However, I have to believe from what we saw in King of the Monsters that Jonah would never give that head to Monarch. But I could see him working with a group working against Monarch like Apex, where they could steal Mecha G and upgrade it with Ghidorah's head somehow. Another possibility for Godzilla's actions that may not be linked to fake Godzilla is that someone could be using something to lure Godzilla for some unknown reason. In fact, surprisingly, it's well within MonsterVerse canon for him to be under mind control. And hear me out on this next part because I am not making this up. Mind control is in the legendary MonsterVerse, and it actually fits in with the history of Godzilla. The Big G himself actually showed some psychic ability in the Heisei era. We also had Mickey Segusa, a recurring Heisei character with psychic abilities. Abilities which would even pop up in Rodan, Mothra, and Orga. However, in Legendary's case, the ability is taken to the extreme where ancient humans were actually controlling the Titans. Hidden in the redacted text during the end credits of King of the Monsters is a story about an ancient Titan war one where telepathic groups of humans would each control their own titan for protection. Different groups would even build their cities near friendly titans to keep safe from more hostile ones. Eventually, they would build massive horns to replicate titan calls and even build structures from the fallen monster's remains. They would not only be able to call in these titans, but they would learn to control them telepathically. Yet their eventual downfall was when they would use the titans for war, upsetting the balance. Because of this, the Titans would rebel against the people that they once lived side by side with, wiping out much of human civilization and scattering its survivors across the globe. Afterwards, an Ice Age would follow, finally putting the enraged monsters to rest. So in the MonsterVerse, there's already a precedent for monster mind control. It just needs to be rediscovered. We already know of the Orca device. It could be used once more, but it wouldn't corrupt or control Godzilla unless it's modified somehow. Ghidorah could also send out an alpha call, but again, it wouldn't control their alphas like Kong or Godzilla. Yet when we look at those leaked toy images from a while back, the Playmates stuff, there is a Godzilla that comes with a radio tower. And think about that for a second. Why include a radio tower with the King of the Monsters? Doesn't make much sense when the other toys come with vehicles, weapons, or some kind of breath effect. But what if this tower is important? Could it be what's drawing Godzilla to the Apex facilities? 
or do they have another purpose, like to control Mecha G or even other Titans? This would be seen as a direct threat from mankind towards Godzilla, taking the Titans under his control away from him. I could easily see this enraging him enough to make him seek out and destroy its source. Sticking with the toy leaks, there are two of Mecha Godzilla, one from Playmates and one of a pop vinyl. And when you see them next to Godzilla, unless Mecha G can compact itself or transform somehow, it seems like it's too big to fit under a convincing Godzilla skin. To be honest, if Kong and Godzilla team up to fight this thing, I hope it's bigger than both of them. Now if we look at Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla as a reference for fake Godzilla, the show on one made the fake pretty obvious. It had a robotic sounding roar, the breath attack was yellow, and the skin tore away fairly easily, revealing its true nature. If the legendary Mecha G has a skin, it's definitely much more advanced than the one that the Simians used in the Showa era. Now I know I seem like I'm against fake Godzilla in this movie, and I kinda am, but I also think it'd be really cool to see an updated fake G, Mecha G transformation scene in Godzilla vs Kong. I just don't want the extra story that it would entail wrapped up into the Godzilla vs Kong main storyline. In my opinion, adding Mecha G is already taking away something from the decades in the making rematch, so I'd rather the story elements from Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla not be included. Now Mecha G has a long history, yet only the initial Showa version employed the fake Godzilla tactic. It wasn't used in the Terror of Mecha Godzilla follow-up, not in the Heisei version, not in Kiryu of the Millennium Era, and not even in the anime or Ready Player One version of more recent takes. To be fair, it only really made sense to do it on the first appearance of that Showa version. The only one that was purely alien built and controlled, while all the others were built all or in part by man. Godzilla of the Showa era was a protector during this time, so the aliens would use the disguise to easily operate Mecha G and not draw instant attack from the humans. It should also be noted that other kaiju like Anguirus did not fall for the cover and would instantly attack even though he was one of Godzilla's strongest allies. So what are your thoughts on Mecha G posing as Godzilla? I do have to wonder if some of the people that were saying that Mecha G is the one climbing up on the carrier just because the first trailer showed Kong punching him and knocking him into the water will be the same ones that after seeing the Japanese trailer where you see Godzilla bitch slap Kong and charge up for an atomic blast are all now like, that's my Godzilla. I only kid though, this is the fun part of waiting for a movie that we're all excited for, the speculation of just what's going to happen. Personally, I don't think we'll see a fake Godzilla, but I want to know what you think. Mecha G only, or Mecha G with a Godzilla suit? As always, your likes, shares, comments, and subscriptions go a long way towards helping the channel grow. Take care guys, and I hope to see you next time.